What is up, everybody? Thanks for coming by in another edition of the Opening Tee Podcast. I am your host for it, Jason Roslin, and you can find me on Twitter at DFSGolfer23. And this is your first time joining here for the podcast. I appreciate it very much. It is a three-part series here at the Osmo Golf Podcast. And what I do is I give you the opening tee. So all the information that we have available for the week upcoming in the first one, then I go over some fit and form in the second one, followed by ownership in the third one. Maybe total 45 minutes to an hour each week, given to you Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday in small increments. And uh, in this one, what I do is I give you a little bit of what happened last week, just in case you weren't available to play, you didn't want to play, or you didn't see any of the action. Uh, and I'm going to give you everything that you would want to know heading into this week. And to start off the podcast, what I do is I go over the foursome of facts for the week. And first off, we got to talk about DJ for a second. First, he was one of my, uh, I will say, big misses. I, I had way too little of him, uh, obviously, but still managed to come away without going broke, which was nice. Um, DJ gets his 22nd 21st win of his career in 13th straight season. Only three other golfers in the history of the PGA Tour have a longer streak there. So very, very impressive. Great company. Tiger Woods, Arnold Palmer, and Jack Nicklaus. A pretty great company to be in. He did it on a 6,900-yard course. He actually lost strokes off the tee for the week. I shouldn't say strokes. He lost like .01 for the week. So really, really impressive stuff. Uh, Will Gordon is our second for some fact of the week. Gets his card by tying for third uh, with Mackenzie Hughes, who hit two bombs on 17 and 18 to tie him, but still did not affect him. He gets his conditional status, his uh, special temporary membership, which means he will play out of the top 125 non-member category for the remainder of the year before becoming a full member next year. So very similar to Doc Redmond. Bryson DeChambeau is our third fact of the week. Another top 10 for him. Just super impressive. As he heads to a place next week where he's going to get to unleash the Kraken. Maybe 12 times around. Can't wait to see that. That should be fun. He will certainly be the odds-on favorite to win as long as he tees it up. Four players are going to end it for me for the first one fact for the week. The last one. I'm going to go quickly through him. Victor Hovland. Three for three. Top 25s. Abe Answer. Three for three. Top 25s. He was came in 11th. While... Patrick Cantley and Paul Casey's return to the golf course went rather well, in my opinion. Uh, not going to lie, it was pretty good. So that is your quick for some facts for the week. As we'll head into my high and low, the only really high I had was uh, Doc Redman, and uh, he was he was pretty decent. And the call on Rory and Patrick Cantley being rather low-owned in the higher dollar, I was able to pair them together with Doc Redman and the very high-owned Victor Hovland Ended up getting me pretty good into the cash, even though I had four of six. Who cares of the other players? Where it really didn't matter. Uh, they missed the cut. It was Max Homa and Corey Connors. Still, it allowed me to not go broke, which was nice. Um, other than that, too little DJ, too much. Gary Woodland, Tony Finau, and Colin Morikawa. All right, I want to thank uh, Super Draft, the sponsor for the show today. Uh, the future of daily fantasy sports has arrived. Experience. Superdraft's exclusive game mode multiplier, which this week for PGA, we had a nice 5K to first place, uh, 25K guaranteed. So you get to say goodbye to salary restrictions and hello to lineup freedom. Use your fantasy sports knowledge to draft any player you want and build and build any team the way you want to. No lineup restrictions, countless lineup possibilities. Experience daily fantasy sports the way you want to. You want to root for your specific guys? You get to do that. Right now, Superdraft is offering contests in PGA, NASCAR, and MMA with NBA on the verge of returning. I'm sure they'll be offering contests then, so enjoy DFS all year round. Sign up for Superdraft today using promo code AWESOMO12. It's $10 free on your first deposit, 10 or more, and 20 total free on 100 or more. You're also going to get a free $12 ticket for your first sign up. Download in the App Store today or play at Superdraft.io. Superdraft, no limits, more winning. All right, the next section here, I go over. It's a little fun. Sometimes we can glean uh, something out of it. You know, Brendan Todd was in this section uh, last week, and he ended up having a really decent week, but faltered on Sunday, of course. Um, so maybe you can get stuff out of it. First, we'll start off with uh, the positive. Sung JM, close to 40% owned in certain contests. He needs a birdie on 18 to make the cut. And what does Sung J do? He strings at the heart of DFS players around the world and makes the cut. Ends up shooting decent over the weekend and putting up a good enough points where it certainly helped him to be there on the weekend. 
Tony Finau, on the other hand, went the opposite way. They both played the ninth hole, which was their 18th, needing a birdie. Sung Jay got it. Tony Finau did not. Bubba Watson also in that. He did not needed a birdie on nine and couldn't do it. Cam Smith, though, ready for this? Cam Smith needed to play the last two holes at one over or better, and he couldn't do it going bogey bogey. Then I guess a positive, I'll throw one in there. Spieth needed 32 in the front nine to make it and did. Ryan Moore, though, he needed to play the last four holes at two over or better. You know, I'm, sometimes maybe I can even do that. He couldn't do it. Also lost one point strix, uh, strokes putting on average, so 3.2 for the first two days. That's not going to help you make a cut, that's for sure. Grace, Brandon Grace, missed a 17 footer to miss the cut. Also lost 3.2 strokes putting, so not good at all. Um, no, no, I'm sorry, that's 1.6 total. Take that back. I apologize. Okay, Brian Gay needed to play the last hole at bogey or better. He couldn't do it. Made double. Scotty Scheffler needed to play the last four holes at even or better. He couldn't do it. Matt Wolf needed an even par on the back nine, and he couldn't do it. A late entry into this week's field here at the Rocket Mortgage. Brian Harmon, of all guys, he lost 3.7 strokes putting. Shot minus two, so he missed the cut because of his putting. Cam Percy in that same boat lost 3.4, shot minus one. And James Hahn, who's going to be in the field again this week, he lost three and shot minus one. So if he can get his putter going, maybe he'll play the weekend coming up. On the opposite side, guys that really putted well but could find nothing else in the game, which, you know, doesn't mean it's going to come around right away, but definitely could with these guys. Keith Mitchell gained over five strokes putting. When he does that, he should be up in the top ten, but nope, he missed the cut this week. Gary Woodland, same thing, gained three strokes putting. He missed the cut by two. And lastly, Scotty Scheffler gained 2.6 strokes putting and missed the cut by one. Okay, we'll move on now to the statistical review, which is always really important to look at and uh, definitely can try and glean some things going forward into the next week of some of these players. So well, we start off first with the strokes gained, and then I give you the, uh, a, uh, the old age stat that correlates with the strokes gained. So we'll start off with off the tee. Doc Redman led the field in uh, this week. Roy McIlroy was two. Sergio Garcia, three. Xander Schauffele, four. Rafa Cabrera Bello, five. Joseph Brandlett was six. Brendan Todd, seven. Austin Cook, eight. Tyler Duncan, nine. Johnny Vegas and Sam Burns round out the top ten. Moving on to driving accuracy. Let's see how many we can match up. We can match up Brendan Todd. We can match up Doc Redmond. And that's it. So only two in the driving accuracy. Now we go over to driving distance. We had... Johnny Vegas was a match. Rory McIlroy was a match. And that's actually it. So two on each side, which uh, goes to show that at the way to gain strokes off the tee at TPC River Highlands was not necessarily with your driver or with accuracy. It was a combination of both in the right spots. So uh, really goes to show anybody could win. I mean, look at the one and two of the board. Dustin Johnson and Kevin Streelman, two opposite ends of the spectrum type players. All right, let's move on to the approaches, which is certainly going to be important this upcoming week. Wes Bryan was number one of the week. Wow, impressive. Russell Henley was two. Victor Hovland, three. Lucas Glover, four. Harold Varner. Dustin Johnson, Pat Gazire, Doc Redman, Emiliano Grillo, Scott Stallings, and Kevin Strillman round out the top ten. Going over to greens and regulation, Scott Stallings is a match. Kevin Na, not a match. Siwoo Kim had a bunch of greens, as did Brian Stewart this week. Not that money close, though, as they didn't really gain that many strokes on the approach. Brendan Todd, William Gordon, Doc Redman. Johnny Vegas, Paul Casey, Jim Furyk, and Kevin Streelman on the greens and regulation. So we do have a pretty good correlation, maybe about 4 out of 10, about 40% of the guys that were in the top in the greens and regulation, regulation were also the top in the strokes gained on the approach. All right, and our last category here before we move on to the upcoming week is uh, strokes gained putting and, of course, our birdie review. We want to make sure that we are... Getting, uh, making sure we're targeting guys that are making a ton of birdies because that's, of course, how you get the DraftKings points. Uh, so before we do that, let's go into putting. Brendan Steele, again, another third good start this year. Now, he doesn't have a win, but still um, a really good showing out here this week. Ryan Armour, Kevin Chappell, Dustin Johnson. That's why he won, obviously. Whenever Dustin Johnson's in the top five in strokes gained putting for the week, you can certainly expect him to have a chance to win. 
Um, Louis Oosthuizen, Kevin Na, Bryson DeChambeau, Kevin Stroman, Brant Snedeker, William Gordon, and Mackenzie Hughes. We go over to putts per green in regulation. We do have some pretty big correlation. Ryan Armour, who I just mentioned, Brendan Steele, Mackenzie Hughes, William Gordon, Bryson DeChambeau, Kevin Chappell. So as per normal, uh, there was a lot of crossover between uh, strokes game putting and putts per GIR. Okay, last thing we're going to do is a top birdie review. I'm going to go over the birdies. William Gordon led the field this week, 27 birdies. Very impressive. Dustin Johnson was two with 25, and Brendan Steele tied him at that number. Ryan Armour, 24. And then we got Patton Kazire, Patrick Cantlay, and Harold Varner coming in at the first two guys, 23, and Varner, 22. Whereas last one I'll give you is... 21 birdies or more, uh, a birdie or better, of course. Kevin Schumann, Sam Burns, Russell Henley, and Jordan Spieth. So uh, that is your review from last week. It was a really fun tournament if you uh, weren't able to watch it. Uh, Dustin Johnson certainly made it interesting down the stretch with a ball out of bounds on 13. He was able to save bogey and then some some other squirrely shots there in the finish, but he was able to get it done. So we turn our attention to this week, and it will certainly be a much different pace with only two of the world's, uh, maybe three of the world's top 10 and six of the world's top 20, whereas last two weeks we've had a really packed field. All right, now we'll transition into this week as we've got another millionaire maker on tap. And regardless of the field, maybe not being as strong as we're used to in the last two weeks, we're still playing for the same prize. So the tour heads for the second straight year to Detroit Golf Club. Detroit Golf Club is a Donald Ross design. Finally, we are out of the web of Peter Dye and the Peter Dye courses. Go to a Don Ross, and if you're a golfer and uh, know Don Ross or have played on Don Ross before, uh, then you know he goes from back to front. Uh, that, that's the way he sets out his greens. That's the way... Uh, Pretty much all of the courses that he he has done do that. And what that means is you just can't be above the hole. As long as you're below the hole, you certainly can have a chance uh, to putt and make the putt. So let's learn a little bit about Detroit Golf Club. We got, it's a par 72, 7,300 yards, so relatively short by that stretch. Uh, four par threes measuring 167, 207, 230, and 160. So two in that 160 range. Uh, and then two over 200. We've got 10 par fours. Ranging from 372 all the way up to, it looks like, uh, 461. And then a bunch there in the middle. Uh, three, uh, four under 400 and the rest between four and 500. With four par fives, 635, 552, 557, um, I'm sorry, 555, and 577. So certainly once we get into the players a little bit, uh, I will... Uh, Tell you why I think the guy is going to be priced where he is, um, and <laughs> I think it's it's pretty easy to see coming. Okay, so uh, it's only been here for one year, right? So we need to take that into consideration when we look at the stats. It's not a lot to go off of, but what we can go off of, what we can see is how the course played, and the course played relatively easy. It was one of the top 10 easiest on the tour last year. It averaged almost two strokes under par per round. Uh, reason why? Simple. It's a pretty short course, but the driving accuracy, 64% fairways hit. That's pretty good, especially when it was the top 10 in terms of driving distance on the year. So obviously, you can just pretty much bomb it everywhere. There's obviously not that much trouble that, that would lie uh, in the places of, of the landing ranges. It looks like there's just an absolute ton of drivers to hit around this golf course. Uh, so that's probably one of the easiest reasons. And then, of course, when you get the 64% uh, uh, for driving accuracy, it's another reason why. Uh, now, when you have easy... Easy holes, just bomb it. You're going to have a lot less clubs into the green, so it makes the greens pretty easy to hit. Again, uh, over 72% uh, on greens and regulation for the week, so very, very easy to hit. The course is guarded by bunkers. Uh, that, that's really what they have. Uh, if you're in the bunker, it's one of the hardest to get into. Uh, it's less than 50% on the sand save percentage. Scrambling, however, isn't that hard as long as you avoid the bunkers. 70% uh, up and down, right? So now we've got the top 
20 hardest greens when you're actually on them, right? The, go the golf course has to have at least a little bit of protection, so they get it in the form of the greens. Uh, again, if you're below the hole, though, they're not that hard to putt from. Of course, you can't always control that, especially when they're the front pins. All right, let's move on to the field and see the player of pool that we're going to get to choose from this week. Pretty standard. It's it's all the winners of, of those uh, special tournaments and then regular tournaments. And then the funky ones start with career money list. That is Luke Donald, Steve Stricker, and Bo Van Pelt this week. Sponsors exemptions. Got a few good ones. James Nichols, Eric Van Royen, Christian Bezenhoot. We all right, so we've got a couple of good sponsors exemption this week. Well, we were supposed to have one in the, in the form of William Gordon, but... He went out and earned his way. One of the hardest ways to get on the PGA Tour now is through your seven sponsor exemptions you get when you graduate college. You have a max of seven to use. And, of course, if you get in a top ten, you're allowed to use that to a start. And you have to accumulate in those seven starts plus top tens what's equivalent to the top 125 on the FedEx Cup points for the previous season. So with the third place last week at the Travelers, he was able to secure that with his uh, added to his two top 25s that he had uh, in the previous part of the year. And he earned one of the hardest ways on tour. In fact, it was the same way Doc Redman did last year here at this very golf course uh, in this very tournament where he came in second place. And we've seen him, again, have a pretty good career, earn himself some good money, and be a good scorer in DraftKings, especially in the cheap range. But I'm wouldn't be surprised to see both of those guys this week, both Doc Redman and William Gordon, not very cheap. And uh, one of the more talked about names. So uh, some good ones, and uh, we'll uh, now go on to the next one. Finishing off, we got Peter Quest, who played last week as well, Satith Zagala, who also played last week and missed the cut, as well as Arjan Atwal. The next weird one is the life member, Vijay Singh, is going to tee it up this week. And then we get into the, the uh, top 125 non-member, which is, uh, again, getting it through those that special temporary membership or an international player like Matt Wallace and Lucas Beauregard and Doc Redman also falls under this category. The last one, the top 125 medical, which we've seen Daniel Berger come off of and come off of in a flurry. We've got Brunson Burgoon this week, Kevin Chappell, who was make, made the cut last week, was on uh, featured groups on Sunday for a little while. Chris Kirk, who just uh, got it done on the uh, web.com tour, or I'm sorry, excuse me, Corn Ferry tour, apologize. Uh, Charles Schwartzel, James Hahn, Jimmy Lovemark, Grayson Murray, Hudson Swafford, Wesley Bryan, who's two for two and made cuts since coming back, Sung Yul No, and Greg Chalmers. So a decent amount of players there. No surprise, as a lot of the stars are not here playing this week. Uh, we only have three of the world's top 10 and six of the world's top 20. So uh, just a little tidbit there. A couple of uh, other uh, weird ones. Padraig Harrington's getting in on a minor medical. And then the last exemption category, which is one of the worst things to be in on the PGA Tour, is the 126 to 150 category. Got some good players playing out of it, though, this week. Harris English and Alex Noren, who have had a decent year. Uh, a couple of other players. Peter Uline, who's played some decent golf. And a few others. Okay, so how are those guys that I just mentioned and the rest of the field going to be able to score this week? Well, interestingly enough, Strokes gained off the tee not one golfer last week last year gained over four strokes for the week off the tee, which is rare, very rare do you see that. Now, with Bryson DeChambeau playing this week and hitting the ball as far as he does right now, I actually suspect that'll change quite a, quite a bit. I, I suspect Bryson will be able to gain a ton of strokes uh, off the tee next week. Now, what else do you need? Where do they gain it? They gain it on the approach. If you put yourself in position to make putts, as I just mentioned, Don Roth, Don Ross courses, which is, it's a bent, it's POA still, they give you the opportunity to putt on if you're in the right position. So you make it on the approaches, you make it with the putter. It's it's a recipe that, again, if you're a bomber, that's how you can get it done. But there was plenty of guys in the top five last year uh, that don't bomb the ball. Patrick Reed, Brant Snedeker among them. So still, plenty of ways to get it done here. It's not overly long. Uh, and there's just not a ton of places uh, to gain strokes off the tee. But again, the field wasn't separated last year by a guy like Bryson DeChambeau. So again, I, I do suspect that'll change. They're going to have a lot of wedges, a lot of 100 and under, 125 and under this week. So if you you got to read on somebody that's great with their wedges or has looked good, um, Brendan Todd last week was kind of uh, that 
eye popper there, certainly take a look at them. All right, before we wrap it up, we are going to uh, give the top six salary guesses. I like to do this every week, see how close I, I get. Now, sometimes I get it all wrong because the field changes, but normally the field uh, doesn't change from when I'm recording. So I'm going to guess Bryson DeChambeau, 12,400. I, I just don't see anybody close to uh, as good as him in this field. I may be a little outlandish in that, but uh, I think he's far and away the best player, and I don't. I think if they don't price him there, his ownership will get sky high since he's one of the most notorious names in there. I think with that, they'll put Webb Simpson somewhere above eleven thousand. I have eleven thousand five hundred written down, just because I don't think they want to put that much price differential between the two. And then I got Ty Hatton coming in at ten nine, Patrick Reed ten six, Hideki Matsuyama ten three, and Sung J M at ten point one. So those are my top six. We also don't know about Webb Simpson because he withdrew from the Travelers out of an abundance of caution uh, dealing with uh, COVID-19. So we actually don't really know where that stands. Um, I suspect he'll still be playing, but you never know. Uh, so uh, I think that could shake it up if he does end up having to withdraw. And of course, anything could happen in the next three days. But we'll be here. We're going to recap it for you. And of course, if crazy stuff happens on Wednesday afternoon, Ben and I will be live on Wednesday night at 8.30. Going to break it all down, all the previous happenings from the three days that, that led up to Wednesday night. And of course, again, we're going to have a nice early lock. Uh, now, Detroit, it's a, it's a little different. Maybe we'll get an extra hour. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, we'll have to see when tea times come out. But until then, everybody, thanks for coming by. Of course, uh, go ahead and check out my first cut article that is live likely now uh by the time you're listening to this uh and go ahead that's just going to give a little bit more in-depth information of course if you're a reader perfect information if you don't like to read then this is for you so uh thanks for coming by uh, again we like to keep all of these uh podcasts at about 25 minutes and of course as the week rolls on we're going to have plenty of promos and giveaways if you're not already an osmo plus member uh and if you are not and are looking to get in especially this week when there are a lot of players that uh as most people may not know uh 895 for the week so uh come on and join you get everything that we uh offer included in that so Till next time, everybody, thanks for coming by the Opening Tea Podcast, and we'll see you on the other side. Cheers.